Good evening, evening everyone, everyone, and, and welcome, welcome to the 2016, 2016 Liberty Medal Ceremony, honoring a hero of the Civil Rights Movement, Congressman John Lewis. <laughs> the ceremony will officially begin at 7, but in the meantime, I'd like to take a few moments to share our thanks and offer some special messages. As you know, the National Constitution Center is the national center for nonpartisan education and debate on the U.S. Constitution. And we deliver this important mission through this magnificent museum that you see behind me, through our engaging town hall debates, and by providing the best civic education resources in the country, including our phenomenal interactive Constitution, which launched just one year ago. And it's because of you that we were able to educate and inspire citizens about the meaning and importance of the U.S. Constitution in dynamic ways every day. On behalf of Jeff Rosen and the entire staff of the National Constitution Center, I want to thank all of you, our donors, our partners, and visitors, along with our public officials, and last but certainly not least, our dedicated Board of Trustees, for everything that you do to help us bring the U.S. Constitution to life. I'd like now to welcome to the podium our great friend and partner, Cynthia McLeod, Superintendent of Independence National Historical Park, who has some important words to share with us. Cindy? Good evening, and welcome everyone to Independence National Historical Park. What a great crowd you are to honor with all of us, John Lewis, a true civil rights hero. Words like civil rights are especially meaningful to the National Park Service. The National Park Service has more than 25 specifically civil rights themes, civil rights themed um, sites ranging from Harper's Ferry National Historical Park, where John Brown took his stand against slavery, to the Cesar Chavez National Monument, to labor rights, to the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail, where John Lewis and others led peaceful demonstrators to emphasize the need for full voting rights. And right here, across the mall from us tonight, across the um, from the National Constitution Center is Independence Hall, the mother of all civil rights sites, where our nation's founders gathered to plan a path separate from England forward to freedom and liberty, and where people today still exercise their First Amendment rights. It's where the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution were debated, adopted, and signed, setting that foundation for all of our civil rights. Before coming to Independence National Historical Park, I met Congressman Lewis while I served as superintendent of the Maggie Lena Walker National Historic Site in Richmond, Virginia. Mrs. Walker, like John Lewis, rose above very difficult circumstances. She was born during the Civil War. She worked hard during turbulent times to achieve great things. She was a successful African-American businesswoman who advocated in her time for civil rights. Yes, the National Park Service is very proud to play a major role in telling our nation's stories of liberty, equality, and justice. And this year is the centennial anniversary of the National Park Service. Your birthday present to the National... Thank you. <laughs> so your birthday present to the National Park Service is to help us inspire everyone to be involved in the next 100 years of protecting and sharing the nation's most treasured places. I hope that tonight's ceremony serves also as an invitation to a new generation to model the inspiring life of Congressman John Lewis, a man whose personal sacrifices and unwavering commitment to justice have forever changed this nation's history. Congressman Lewis's life story has been painted on the canvas of freedom. He has taught us his values through his examples. He stayed strong and steadfast during times of turmoil, insult, radical change, and many challenges, truly defining moments in our history. So I'm honored to be with you here today to witness yet another extraordinary moment in history. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cynthia. Now, there are a few superstars whose ongoing support helped to make nights like tonight's Liberty Medal ceremony possible. 
I'd like to invite them to join us on stage now. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Ira Lubert. Dan Fitzpatrick, President of Citizens Bank of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Bill Sasso, Chairman of Stradley Ronan Stevens and Young, LLP. William Adams, Chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Doug DeVos, Chairman of the National Constitution Center's Executive Committee. Sherilyn Eiffel, President and Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. <laughs> Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney. <laughs> Dr. Amy Gutman, President of the University of Pennsylvania. and former uh, Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rundell will be joining us momentarily. Uh, now, we know tonight is going to be exciting, and you may want to share it with your friends and family. We invite you to use the hashtag Liberty Medal. And while we encourage you to use social media, we ask that you please silence any mobile devices that blink, ring, or beep. And I'll give you a moment to do that now. Thank you. A few of our special guests this evening recorded messages of support for tonight's honoree and we'd like to share those with you now. Please turn your attention to the screen. Welcome to the 2016 Liberty Medal Ceremony at Philadelphia's National Constitution Center here on Independence Mall. Citizens Bank is proud to join in this tribute to a hero of the Civil Rights Revolution and a defender of the U.S. Constitution, the Honorable John Lewis. We find it particularly fitting to honor Representative Lewis now as the nation celebrates the 150th anniversary of the 14th Amendment, which protects individual liberty and guarantees the equal protection of the laws. By leading the March on Bloody Sunday in 1965, by participating in the Nashville lunch counter sit-ins and the Freedom Rides, by speaking at the historic March on Washington, by all these things and more, Representative Lewis helped make our Constitution's promise of liberty and equality a reality for countless Americans. On behalf of our CEO and a trustee of the National Constitution Center, Bruce Van Son, and all of our colleagues at Citizens Bank, we congratulate Representative Lewis for this richly deserved 2016 Liberty Medal. As Americans, we honor the Declaration of Independence, which articulated the self-evident truth that certain rights are inalienable. We honor the Constitution that secured our liberty. Too often we forget that for countless Americans, the promises enshrined in these two great documents were not immediately realized. Fortunately for us all, while the arc of the moral universe is long, it bends toward justice. But that arc does not bend by itself. It is bent by brave women and brave men. By his deeds, his character, and his historical legacy, the recipient of our 2016 Liberty Medal, has helped move this nation toward justice. He is a true American hero and an inspiration to his fellow citizens. On behalf of Stradley Ronan Stevens and Young, I congratulate the Honorable John Robert Lewis. I'd now like to invite to the stage former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. Not yet. <laughs> now, there's one more chief executive who uh, couldn't be here this evening but like to share his thoughts in honor of Congressman Lewis. I send my warmest greetings to all those attending the National Constitution Center's 28th Annual Liberty Medal Ceremony, and I am pleased to join in honoring my good friend, Congressman John Lewis. 240 years ago, at a hall in Philadelphia, a band of patriots launched an improbable experiment in democracy. Our founding fathers, a group of farmers and merchants, lawyers and businessmen, joined together under the banner of liberty and equality to put words on parchment, bringing bold visions to life and altering the course of history. Generations since have looked to their example, 
each successive one working to narrow the gap between the promise of our ideals and the realities of their time. Congressman John Lewis is someone who for decades has been on the front lines of this unending pursuit. Marching, fighting, and agitating, he helped change the status quo. And because of his efforts and those of clear-eyed, big-hearted patriots like him, we live in a freer, more just, and more prosperous America. We each have a part to play in perfecting our union, and it requires understanding the principles upon which our nation was founded and striving to make those ideals real in the lives of all of our people. The National Constitution Center carries this mission forward through its efforts to educate patrons about American history. Your important work reaffirms the notion, reaffirms the notion that we cannot know where we are going until we understand where we come from. But once we do, we can forge a brighter future for ourselves, for our communities, and for generations to come. You have my best wishes for a memorable event, event. President Barack Obama. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the 2016 Liberty Medal Ceremony. This is the 28th year for the event, created in 1988 to celebrate the bicentennial of the U.S. Constitution. The National Constitution Center chose Congressman John Lewis as this year's honoree for his courage and conviction in fighting for freedom. And he joins a list of recipients who have over the years helped shape our world, from Nelson Mandela to Kofi Annan to Sandra Day O'Connor and Colin Powell. Over the next hour, we will hear of Congressman Lewis's journey from son of a sharecropper to civil rights leader. It is the hope of the National Constitution Center that his story will inspire others to raise their voices for liberty. And now, the 2016 Liberty Medal Ceremony. Please welcome Nightline co-anchor and ABC News Chief, National Correspondent Byron Pitts. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. And once again, welcome to the 2016 Liberty Medal Ceremony. I'm Byron Pitts of ABC News. There's a great place to be ABC News, but when I began in life, there was no reason to believe I'd ever get there. I was born in 1960. At the time, Jim Crow still had its foot on the necks of kids like me throughout the South. We lived in Baltimore, and while Maryland wasn't Mississippi, it was a segregated city, and separate was not equal. And I know I never would have achieved what I have in life if not for the sacrifices of Congressman John Lewis and all those who fought side by side with him in the Civil Rights Movement. It's a great privilege to be able to pay my respects to him today as the National Constitution Center awards him the Liberty Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome National Constitution Center President and CEO Jeffrey Rosen and 2016 Liberty Medal recipient, the Honorable John Lewis. Before we get to the medal, a number of people have thoughts and tributes to share. So let me again uh, begin by turning over the microphone to Jeffrey Rosen. Jeffrey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Constitution Center. Thank you so much for joining us as we honor the 2016 Liberty recipient, Congressman John Lewis. Here at the National Constitution Center, our mission is to teach people across America and around the world about the most inspiring vision of liberty ever written, the U.S. Constitution. And today, our mission is more urgent than ever. That's because it's clear that constitutional education and civil dialogue in America are in a state of crisis. There's a new study out just this week from the University of Pennsylvania's Annenberg Center for Public Policy. It shows 
that nearly a third of Americans cannot name a single branch of government, and only a quarter can name all three. The antidote to this crisis in civic literacy is constitutional education, and the National Constitution Center is uniquely situated to provide it. Also, Americans are eager to receive it. Pocket constitutions are selling out on Amazon, and the National Constitution Center's incredible new interactive constitution has surpassed six million visitors since it launched online a year ago on Constitution Day. USA Today has called the interactive constitution an internet sensation, and we're working with the College Board to make it the centerpiece of the new AP history and government exams. Ladies and gentlemen, on Friday, the day before Constitution Day, I'm thrilled to report that we launched this amazing new app for the interactive constitution. You can get it on your iPhones. I want you to download it at the App Store or Google Play. Not right now, because I want you to listen to what I'm saying. But after the show, download it at the App Store. Interactive Constitution. It brings together the top liberal and conservative scholars in America to write about every clause of the Constitution, describing what they agree about and what they disagree about. It is a model for the reasoned discourse that the founders sought to promote among all Americans. And now our goal is to bring this app and the interactive constitution to every American from 8 to 80. And I want your help in doing that. Americans are hungry for constitutional education, but they also sense that the framers' vision of compromise, of reasoned discourse, and even constitutionalism itself is under siege. Only informed citizens will stand up to preserve, protect, and defend the rights and liberties that define us as a free society, just as Congressman John Lewis has done throughout his extraordinary life. And that's why the Constitution Center has such a crucial role to play as America's leading convening space for nonpartisan constitutional education, bringing together the best voices on all sides of our constitutional debates to converge around our shared commitment to the beautiful principles of the US Constitution. The Liberty Medal is central to our mission. We are gathered tonight to honor one of America's constitutional heroes, Congressman John Lewis. It is fitting that this year marks the 150th anniversary of congressional approval of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which as you can find on the Interactive Constitution app, guarantees to all Americans the privileges and immunities of citizenship and to all persons the equal protection of the laws. After the Civil War, constitutional heroes like John Bingham, Thaddeus Stevens, and Frederick Douglass fought to ensure that the text of the Constitution fulfilled Lincoln's promise at Gettysburg of a new birth of freedom together with the 13th Amendment, which ended slavery, and the 15th Amendment, which protected the right to vote free of racial discrimination, the 14th Amendment promised a second founding for America after the Civil War. Over the next several years, the Constitution Center is working to commemorate the 150th anniversary of this second founding. We are bringing together thought leaders, public officials, senators, congressmen from all sides of the aisle, from diverse philosophical and legal perspectives, to debate the original understanding of the Reconstruction Amendments and their contemporary significance. This, this initiative is supported by the National Endowment for the Humanities as part of its Common Good Initiative. And I'm thrilled that the chairman of the National Endowment, Bro Adams, is sitting on stage today. Please join me in thanking NEH Chairman Bro Adams. But although the second founding deserves commemoration, we all know that it took another century to begin to realize its constitutional promise. It also took the courageous work of the civil rights movement led by constitutional heroes like John Lewis. During this ceremony, you will hear much about the achievements of Congressman Lewis, who is the only surviving member of the six heroic leaders of the civil rights movement who stood with Martin Luther King Jr. in organizing the March on Washington in 1963. Like Congressman Lewis, 
who has inspired young people with his best-selling series, March. We at the Constitution Center are committed to teaching all Americans about the Civil Rights Movement, its constitutional legacy, and the battle to ensure that the natural right of equality promised by Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, reconceived by Lincoln, and enshrined by Bingham in the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, would finally begin to become a reality for all Americans. Given this extraordinary constitutional legacy, it is a privilege for the National Constitution Center to honor Congressman John Lewis with the Liberty Medal tonight. On behalf of all of us at the Constitution Center, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Cheryl Lynn Eiffel. Ms. Eiffel is the President and Director of Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. She's also on the faculty of the University of Maryland School of Law in Baltimore. And she is a prolific writer and scholar on the issues of race and equal justice. Cheryl Lynn Eiffel. Good evening, everyone. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. But civil rights lawyers, and I'm one, civil rights lawyers like my predecessor, Thurgood Marshall, and civil rights activists and patriots like John Lewis, know that to make the words on the page truly mean something in the lives of everyone requires work. John Lewis, civil rights leader, American patriot, son of the South, has one of those improbable biographies that is uniquely American. Born the son of sharecroppers, raised in Pike County, Alabama, with his brothers and sisters, he should have had what was an ordinary life for a young black boy in the segregated South. But there was something in him, a vision, a heart. The mark of a true patriot and an activist is that they are never satisfied. And John Robert Lewis was never satisfied. Whether it was his dissatisfaction when he sought to get a library card from the white library in his hometown along with his brothers and sisters, or whether it was when he heard Martin Luther King and decided to write to him and received his inspiration from that first meeting with Dr. King, to going to Fisk University and leading lunch counter sit-ins where he was beaten and harassed, leading the Freedom Rides where he was beaten again all across the South as he sought to desegregate waiting rooms in bus stations. Maybe it was his dissatisfaction that America was not listening. And so when he gave his brilliant speech at the March on Washington, he spoke to America. I just spoke with Jeff, Jess Braven earlier, the reporter from the, Was the Wall Street Journal, who told me that when the Wall Street Journal wrote about the March on Washington, they didn't mention Dr. King. They mentioned the speech of John Robert Lewis. He was considered the rabble rouser, the young guy who was unpredictable and forceful and powerful. And then, of course, it was John Lewis on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, demanding the right of citizenship of every, for every African American, demanding the right to vote, the right that he calls sacred. John Lewis was a young man when he did all of this, 21 at lunch counters, 22 on freedom rides, 23 at the March on Washington and leading the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Many of us today are impatient with young people and maybe resist the activism of young people, but so too did people resist the activism of John Lewis and look what he did for this country. The legacy he leaves behind of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The legacy of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, 
which marks the beginning of true democracy in this country. Marks the beginning of true democracy in this country. And John Lewis remained an activist. Like many of the best, he created new chapters in his life, becoming a city council person and a United States Congress person, and most recently an author of the graphic series March in his effort to reach young people once again. And in his effort to compel his colleagues to amend the Voting Rights Act, he continues to be an activist. But John Lewis also shows us something else that's so important. He shows us the joy of a life committed to a passion for justice. He shows us that this can be a lifelong passion. I believe that that passion he demonstrates, that joy he demonstrates, he does on behalf of those who didn't make it, on behalf of Jimmy Lee Jackson, on behalf of Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner, on behalf of Martin Luther King, on behalf of those who died too young, like Fannie Lou Hamer. He shows us the joy of a lifetime of civil rights activism. It is my honor, my esteemed honor and pleasure to join with you tonight in this celebration of John Robert Lewis on behalf of myself and the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. We salute and honor you. What a powerful story. It was once said of the great American boxer, and it is true it's Joe Lewis, and it seems true tonight of this great American fighter. He is a credit to his race, the human race. We're honored now to that Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney also has some words for us today about Congressman Lewis. It's a pleasure to introduce him now, Mayor Kenney. That's a hard film to follow. Uh, in my good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. In my opinion, the most consequential line ever written in American history is the second sentence of the Declaration of Independence. It reads, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our country fought a bloody civil war over that line. And over the years, we have fought many, many smaller battles to make that self-evident truth a daily reality. While we do not yet have true equality for all men and women, black and white, we are closer than we have ever been, thanks to men like Congressman John Lewis. Congressman Lewis's courage led to crucial changes in our laws and also in our culture and in our hearts. Today, many leaders of the civil rights movement are gone. Congressman Lewis is the only surviving member of the Big Six. He represents the Georgia's 5th Congressional District, and he fights to preserve the memory of our civil rights heroes. The route of his historic march across the bridge in Selma is now part of the historical National Trails Program. Congressman Lewis's memoir, March, a graphic novel trilogy teaches the rising generation what happened on that bridge. Congressman Lewis's life is a challenge to us to live, live up to the sacrifices and the sacrifices of those who stood with him. It is a pleasure and a privilege to pay tribute to him on the day when he receives this great honor. Thank you very much for all you've done. Please welcome the president of the, Uni of the University of Pennsylvania, <laughs> sorry, Amy Gutman. I almost uh, was uh, the first unelected president. <laughs> uh, stay in the streets of every city, every village and hamlet of this nation until true freedom comes until the revolution of 1776 is complete. John Lewis was just 23 years old when he spoke these words at the Great March on Washington in 1963. By then, he had already been a leader in the civil rights movement for four years since he was just a teenager. But standing there at the feet of Lincoln, and at the side of King, 
that was something different. He recalled years later that looking out over hundreds of thousands of faces, he was so scared that he had himself wondering if he would be able to speak at all. He did speak, of course. Anyone who knows anything about John Lewis knows him to be a man who does not give in to fear. He does not give in to threats. Courageous is a word that would have been invented for John Lewis. Courageously, John Lewis challenged our nation to overcome racial bigotry and discrimination to achieve true freedom, to complete the revolution of 1776. How appropriate it is for us here today to honor this great man here at the cradle of American liberty, 150 years after Congress ratified and sent the 14th Amendment to the states, the amendment that guarantees equal protection of the laws, equal protection to all, equal liberty is the fundamental right to which John Lewis has dedicated his entire life. It is the cause of freedom that is true because it is the cause of freedom equally shared by all individuals. It is the cause of justice and liberty for all. We gather here today because we love liberty, but none of us has done as much for the cause of liberty as John Lewis. John Lewis has marched for it. He has led a determined people up and over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. John Lewis has kneeled in prayer for it at a segregated swimming pool in Cairo, Illinois. He has inspired generations of student activists to march, to fight, and to be nonviolent throughout, but to be resolute in the cause of freedom. John Lewis has sat down for it, and he has sat in for it at lunch counters in Nashville, Tennessee, and yes, on the floor of the House of Representatives. But most of all, John Lewis has stood up for our freedom in word and in deed, in his achievements as a celebrated congressman from Georgia's 5th District. And in his example, he continues to set for our youth and for every single one of us. Ordinarily, on an occasion like this, I would end by saying congratulations. But that word is far, far too little, and it falls far short today. As an American, as a lover of liberty, and on the occasion of awarding of the Liberty Medal, I know that I say this for all of us, and this is all I have to say. Thank you, Congressman Lewis. Thank you. The revolution of 1776 lives on, and you are a true son of liberty. We thank you, we admire you, and we love you. Please welcome the former governor of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell. Good evening, everyone. As a former board chairman of the Constitution Center, I'm hesitant to criticize our brilliant president. But when he attributed the uh, uptick in sales of the pocket Constitution to our work, I think we were second behind Mr. Khan, Jeffrey. As Jeffrey said in his remarks, the Reconstruction Amendments that were passed after the Civil War 
were called by many the second founding of America. And these amendments were supposed to take the original founding, what was in the original founding, and put them into the Constitution, thereby securing rights of equality for all Americans. But as history shows and as we know, they were necessary, but they were insufficient. For the next 100 years, Jim Crow denied equality, equal rights to black Americans. And it became pretty clear that amendments wouldn't change things. We needed heroes to change things, people willing to risk all for progress. And fortunately, among those heroes was now Congressman John Lewis. John fought the fight relentlessly. He was exposed to ugliness, danger, and physical brutality. But nothing would deter him. And tremendous progress is made. But as we gather here tonight, the fight still goes on. It goes on against an emasculated voting rights bill. It goes on against voter ID bills that seek to suppress people's rights to vote. And that fight. <laughs> and that is a fight that is so, so important, but can't be won by John Lewis alone. John Lewis' determination and courage inspires all of us, adults, children, teenagers alike. And as you've heard tonight a few times, John decided to do something about it by writing a book detailing and chronicling the history of the civil rights struggle from those sit-ins in the early Nashville lunch counters to the passage of the Voting Rights Bill. It's called March, and it's an incredible book written in comic book style, but the, but the prose is not comic book. It's determined, it's real, and it's graphic. When I left Harrisburg as governor, Judge Rendell and I decided that we were gonna start something called the Rendell Center for Civics and Civic Engagement. Our goal was to teach our young people about the American democracy, about our responsibilities and rights under the Constitution. And we decided we'd focus our attention on elementary school, because if we could build a solid foundation there, it would have last those children through their teenage years and into adulthood. Well, the judge and I think that March, the trilogy, the three books, is such an important thing for our children to read, all of our children, to learn about the civil rights struggle that the Rendell Center tonight is announcing that we are donating 368 copies of the trilogy, the, Mar the March trilogy, to every fifth grade public school classroom in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Our great superintendent, Bill Hyde, who is with us tonight, suggested that fifth grade was the right grade for young people to read March. We were also donating 54 copies to every branch library and the central library of our great public library system. We think it is so important that the determination and courage shown by John Lewis and many, many others be known to our kids. Jeffrey quoted those statistics about our adult population knowing very little about the Constitution. We hear people decry the impact of special interests and big money on our political process. That will only change if all of our citizens participate in our political process. We can do this. We can make a difference. We can teach by example. We can teach by learning. We can teach by our own initiative. John Lewis appeared on the Stephen Colbert show a few weeks ago. And John, I promise you we will not make you crowd surf tonight. And at, on the Colbert show, he said, if you see something that's not right, that's not just, not, that's not fair, do something about it. Well, John Lewis has lived up to that admonition throughout his entire life. He's done something about it. He's made change happen. Determination, courage, stick to itiveness, those things can change anything. He needs allies. And all of us tonight should pledge, in honor of this great man receiving this wonderful award, that we will do something when, we something when we see something that's not right, not just, not fair. And John, I want you to know that you've made us all proud to be Americans.
ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to invite Jeffrey Rosen to present the 2016 Liberty Medal to the Honorable John Lewis. The Honorable John Lewis has courageously risked life and limb to win full and equal citizenship for African Americans, steadfastly exemplified the power of nonviolent resistance to defeat injustice, dedicated his life to the cause of liberty until, in his own words from 1963, the revolution of 1776 is complete, committed himself unswervingly to the principles enshrined in the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. For all these reasons, it is a great honor for the National Constitution Center to award the 2016 Liberty Medal to the Honorable John Lewis. Good evening. Good evening. I want to thank Chairman Doug Vos, the Board of Trustees President and CEO Jeff Rosen, Vince Sinkto, your CEO, and all of the administrator and staff of the National Constitutional Center for this Liberty Medal. It is a great honor. It is a special honor for me to join a select group of men and women, all of whom I deeply admire. Nelson Mandela, Dalai Lama, Muhammad Ali, George Mitchell, Thurgood Marshall, and many others who have helped shape world history and have touched the lives of millions of people around the world. I never tried to win any award. My plan wasn't to seek fame or fortune. All I wanted to do is to help out, to do what I could to help make this country and the world community a little bit better, more just, a little more peaceful for all of its citizens. There are so many people who I wish I had lived to see this day to see the powerful role that nonviolent civil disobedience have played in humanizing and changing America and many other parts of our little planet. We were just ordinary people, but we had an extraordinary vision to live in a society that respected the dignity and the worth of every human being. We wanted to build what we call what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others call the beloved community. We truly believe that by refusing to comply with what was wrong, we could get our nation to do what was right. And <laughs> and I can say we did that. We made a lot of progress. We come a great distance. Now there are some people who have said nothing has changed. I said, come and walk in my shoes, and I will show you change. If you had told me a half a century ago, when we were marching across the Pettus Bridge from Selma to Montgomery, that in the 21st century there would be an African American as president of the United States a national museum celebrating our work on the National Mall, that I and so many other Latinos, Asian, and Native American and African American would be members of Congress. I would have said, you're crazy. 
You out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. We didn't have a cell phone, a website. We didn't have a fax machine. We had an old mimograph machine that you had to turn by hand to make flyers. And if you touch it the wrong way, you would get purple stain on your hand. We had yeah. very little money, but we had our hopes and dreams. So we put aside the comfort of our own lives and decided to be committed to a cause greater than ourselves. We believe that what we were doing was right and that what we gave us courage to put our bodies on the line for what was fair and just in America. We overcame great distance, but we the people still have a great distance to go to fulfill the premise of a true democracy. Let the Declaration of Independence, fashioned by the founders of our great nation, right here in this city, the city of Brother Love, be our guide. Its beautiful words affirm the equality of all humanity. Let us continue to put aside and push and pull to protest and to dissent and be prepared to struggle to move the society forward into it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, Latino, native of Asian American. It doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight, rich or poor, male or female, Democrat or Republican. We must stay in the struggle until we build a society based on simple justice. But no one, but no one is left out or left behind. We can do it. We can do this. We will get there. So if you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, speak up. Speak out. Find something you are passionate about and do all you can to make that dream a reality. I said over and over again, never ever get lost in a sea of despair. Never become bitter or hostile because hate is too heavy to bear. Be hopeful, be optimistic, be happy, and continue to press on until we build a nation and a world community at peace with itself. To each and every one of you at the National Constitution Center, thank you for this liberty, Mayor. You made me cry tonight. I will never, ever forget this evening, get this night. We have a distance to travel. Be blessed. Be engaged. Be involved. We will build a beloved community. We will create a society at peace with itself. Thank you so much.